Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dies, and today's project is going to be a Tall Deep Scrunch Over Die. For the most part, I treated the preparation for this shirt just like I do any project. I put it in a hot water pre-wash to get all of the mill soft out of it, and then I soaked it in its own soda ash. You don't want to put an already dyed project into your soda ash bucket because the dye will leach out and then it could ruin your whole soda ash bucket for future projects. So for this one I'm doing the tall deep scrunch. So you want to try not to overwork it, which I have a tendency to do, but just make tall deep scrunches. So I picked the areas that look like they didn't have enough dye and I tried to pull those up to the top layer. And I'm using my over the sink strainer for this project and I love doing tall deep scrunches in these over the sink strainers because I can do two projects at the same time. I place the strainer over top of one of my bins. That way when the ice melts, it can catch all that melting muck water. And for this project, I'm using my commercial ice machine ice. I do like to use the bigger ice cubes when I do these um, tall deep scrunches because I feel like there's like a little divot in the ice cube which can collect some of that dye. And I just think it helps with the color splits. But I think using any ice that you have will work out as well. Now this is the dye over ice method. So when you are in the Facebook group and you see the abbreviation DOI, that's what it stands for, dye over ice. And then these dye spoons are really amazing and you can get them from Boredom with Jen. There is a link down below in the description box for the spoons, the sinew polar matching caddy set, and everything that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. Now I'm going to add a quick little sprinkle of Glauber salt. This is something that I'm trying out. I don't know if it's making a big difference or not. And then I also give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And then I set the project aside and you wanna let it batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. I let this project batch for the full 48 hours. So now it's time for the rinse out. So I like to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase the water up too hot and I rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener. And I get both of those from Dharma Trading Company. And to make it easy for you to find, there is a link down below in the description box. Then I'll put the project in the dryer and then I'll iron it to photograph it. And then we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our tall deep scrunch over dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think this shirt has a major improvement. Now it looked okay before, but it just did not have the amount of saturation that I wanted. And so by going with the darker colors, I feel like I've achieved that nice over dye look. Now you can see some of the original dye showing through and that's okay. I chose the darker colors on purpose because I wanted to try to cover up what was already there and have everything blend in. Now that strong navy has put some really dark, harsh lines through the project, which, you know, I could do without. Ah, uh, I'm not that mad at it though, you know. It's tie-dye and you can't control everything. You just do the best that you can. And I think that when it's on the body being worn, those aren't gonna stand out so much. So I would have either liked to have had a whole bunch more of those dark navy blue lines or just none at all. But you know, it's tie dye and I had fun over dyeing it. 
So if you have projects that you've made that you're not exactly happy with, try to over dye them. So my plan for this one was if I over dye it and then I don't like it, then I'm going to put it in my strip pile where I'm going to try to remove the dye and just start over. I'm going to leave it at this point because I think, I think it looks good. And to each their own, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and somebody will take a look at this and they will love it. So overall, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. I don't have to strip it. I've got a really good looking shirt. The only downside is the shirt has been washed so many times. It now has a little bit of like a worn in sort of fuzz to it that I used my sweater shaver, but I couldn't get it to come off. But you know, I'll just put it at a discounted price and you know, somebody will have a gorgeous shirt. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.